Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm so excited to be with you all virtually. Um, my name is Stacy Katz. I'm an assistant professor in the library at Lehman College, which is part of the City University of New York, um, along with my colleague Shauna Brandle, who's an associate professor in political science at Kingsborough Community College. Um, so today we're just going to talk about our study where we interviewed faculty, senior faculty, senior faculty at senior colleges at the City University of New York, um, and also compare it to a previous study we did um, serving uh, students in OER courses um, at CUNY. So we're going to start saying CUNY and not City University of New York because it's a lot shorter. Okay. All right. So um, I'm Shauna Brandle, as Stacey introed me. Hi to everyone. Um, at CUNY, we have 25 campuses, and we go from uh, community college through graduate honors and professional schools. CUNY has a stated explicit um, mission uh, within our mission statement and across the mission statements of every campus to actually uh, work for upward mobility. So that really dovetails nicely with uh, what CUNY is trying to do with what a lot of open education, especially from a social justice perspective, tries to do. Uh, you can't teach in CUNY for any length of time and not understand the reality. So the financial imperative is very key. You can see the stats here on CUNY that uh, we our students do face real financial need. Um, additionally, we thought it was important to notice, although this survey or this uh, research looks at full time faculty, 57% of CUNY faculty are adjuncts and 53% of our undergrad courses are taught by adjuncts. CUNY has uh, recently been, for the last three years, the recipient of $4 million per year, for so that's $12 million, and SUNY got their own to move towards textbook, textbook affordability and OER specifically. So that really frames up what we've been doing. And in that process, what data you're gonna see a little bit later uh, when we can combine it or sort of compare it, uh, bring it into conversation with the uh, faculty data we have is that we, as Stacey and I, as well as uh, several other folks across CUNY, have been working on collecting student uh, opinions across CUNY about the zero, their zero textbook cost courses. The opinions have been overwhelmingly positive, but you don't have to take it from me. At bit.ly slash CUNY SUNY ZTC, all in caps, you can see all of the data. It's an open protocol, so there's 3,000 or so from four semesters, uh, and there's an article in open practice about practice about our first um, our first semester, so you can check that out as well. So given this explosion in OER activity, I've just actually started to maintain a list of all the research coming out of OE, on OER out of CUNY. Um, so if you want to check that out, that's actually available at bit.ly slash CUNY OER pubs. And actually someone sent me one last night, so this slide is now out of date because there's 29 publications on OER and CUNY. Um, majority of these, as you can imagine, are coming out of our community colleges. Um, because the community colleges are where a lot of our OER activity is happening. Um, and that's partly why we actually focus the study on the senior colleges, um, because there's less known about what's happening in our senior colleges and why the four-year schools, why faculty are adopting OER. You know, there's actually limited qualitative research on OER in comparison to the efficacy studies, uh, which isn't to say there isn't any, but much of it that you look at um, is either in a different context than ours or slightly older. Um, so we wanted to look at what's really happening on the ground with our faculty right now. Um, so that was a big motivation in this study. Um, and so we interviewed 10 full-time CUNY faculty at senior colleges across different titles um, and across different disciplines as well. Um, they, were, they range between about half an hour and an hour in terms of interview. Some were face to face and some were in person, which is a concept that who among us can remember. Um, so the results um, were across a, a number of different domains um, within the interview guide. Um, but primarily, we're going to talk about a few of why did they adopt, um, what support they needed, um, and what they think about it. So why they adopted OER? Um, so faculty felt like the cost barrier was unethical. Um, the faculty who, I, who we interviewed who've adopted OER seem to really understand what students are going through. Um, they seem to really 
to have an alignment with what the student's experience is in terms of understanding that our students don't have the money to buy textbooks. So this is a case where faculty and students, uh, we really overlap here because when we asked students the benefits according to students, uh, we asked them what the benefits of their ZPC course were out of 2,145 senior college answers, this is the, a word cloud of their open response. And you can see the first and second most frequently used words. Uh, the first is access at 589 times, and the second is money. Um, cost comes up there also as well. Uh, yeah, so that access also came up quite a bit in the interviews with faculty. Um, where they understood that access in terms of not the accessibility that we talk about, but access in terms of getting the materials any time that they can because they are working so frequently. Um, they have so many other responsibilities and they're using their phones a lot of times to actually find the resources that they need and to do their schoolwork. There's a really good study from um, Mariana Regalado and Maura Smale out of CUNY um, also showing that our students are really commuting on the subway using phones to access their course materials. So we asked two questions about this. We asked other questions and I really encourage everyone to go look at the data. We did not collect it for the purpose of seeing what students were doing, but we did ask them and they did respond what kind of devices they used and where geographically they actually did their work. So there's a ton of data for anyone who wants to go in there and look, but the two I want to highlight for you now, and this, if you teach students, this will warm your heart as it did mine. How much of the reading did you do? Uh, out of 2,533 responses, 1,986 says it was easier to access. Uh, I'm sorry, that uh, this is my required reading. So 1,923 said that it was, uh, they did the reading, they did all of it. Uh, only a tiny little fraction, 55 students said they did none of it, um, which is really quite amazing. And we asked them about the ease of access. So this is an accessibility in terms of universal design for learning. This is accessibility as could you access it or how easy was it to access? And the overwhelming majority, that very large Pac-Man mouth there said uh, that it was easier to access or about the same, only a teeny tiny percentage of senior college respondents said that it was more difficult to access. So the next domain that we asked about was about what discussions they had about OER. Um, and I found this to be really fascinating. That, uh, so what conversations were you having uh, with your department chair? Basically, everyone responded either that their chair was like, this is fine. This is no big deal. Like They saw it as other professional development. They didn't see it as something that was incredibly special or something that they should be highlighting or that would count towards anything. Um, so it was kind of, can I do this? Sure. That was pretty much the where that went. And I tried to actually probe on these questions and got absolutely nowhere with it. Um, with colleagues in their department, um, it was also if there were any conversations, those were frequently like either blah or negative. Um, which I really appreciate how this faculty phrased it. I accepted that and then it was okay. I can use OER and do all these wonderful things and maybe my colleagues will see it and appreciate it and do the same, or maybe they won't, but it doesn't prevent me from doing all the things I can do with OER. But then the conversations with students were overwhelmingly positive. Um, students really like it, students get into it. Um, I had one faculty member who's not in this slide actually who mentioned that there's a student who's in student government found her across the like campus and said and thanked her for the work she was doing. And she didn't even know at first what this student was referring to. And then it turned out it was based on the OER work that she had done. So the students really appreciate it. Um, I love that this faculty member says, when someone says they don't like it, I think you don't like it and you telegraph it to the students. Um, I think that's so important in how we continue with OER initiatives in terms of faculty buy-in and really being voluntary as opposed to top-down, um, because if someone doesn't like it, then they're going to telegraph that, and then students aren't going to necessarily buy in in the same ways, although they'll still be happy about the free and open aspect. 
So this to me is an instance where uh, I always say that nobody knows their own students like that faculty member. And now we have the data to show it because the faculty are saying that students really do like and appreciate this. And we asked a question on the student survey about uh, whether students would recommend a course to a friend um, like the one that they had just taken. And we use this as a proxy to see, do they really like the course? And you can see overwhelmingly, yes, they would 97.8 of our 2,000, uh, almost 500 responses said, yes, absolutely would recommend. Um, and only like a little tiny, like 50 said no, and that's across four semesters. So I think that's quite good. Five minutes up. Yep. So in terms of what support matters, um, that was the next domain. So faculty appreciated that CUNY is invested in this, that the state is invested in it. Um, that made them feel a little bit good about it but it really wasn't their driving motivation for it. Um, we also, faculty and CUNY do get a financial incentive for adopting OER because we have all this money for the state. Um, but if you look at it across the faculty, the respondents really said that they don't feel like the money actually was worth it. Um, they're doing it because of their students. Um, it doesn't atone for the paper or two they could have gotten out of it with the time that went into it. So the money isn't really a factor in why they're doing this. Um, you know, they don't have, and the next thing actually is time. So the time that they invest in this is time that they're not putting into other work that they're doing. Um, this faculty member had a really interesting take on that, though, where it's developing expertise further. Um, for those of you who have adopted OER and teach with it, know that you are looking through more materials, so you're reading more, you're not just taking the textbook and the course as is, you're really developing your own. Um, so they saw that as an opportunity to develop their own expertise. But, you know, the big question always is what about tenure and promotion? And these are faculty who already teach with OER, so they weren't necessarily incentivized by the idea of doing this for tenure and promotion because at the senior colleges it often wouldn't count. Um, so they know that that's not why they're doing it, but they also feel like it's unfortunate that it's not counted in their tenure and promotion. Um, uh, just to acknowledge the um, Institute for Research Design and Librarianship, the PSC CUNY Grant Cycle 50, Ann Fiddler and Andy McKinney at the CUNY Office of Library Services. Um, and I think I cut Shauna off, though. I know what she was going to say, and I didn't let you say no, it. No, no, that's not. Uh, one One of our findings here is really the difference between senior and college, uh, senior colleges and junior college in terms of faculty incentive. Uh, and when we look forward, because we don't expect the state to keep that $4 million coming for forever, certainly uh, we don't know even at this point if we'll have it for next year. The budget's not set yet. so thinking about sustainability going forward tenure by incorporating more oer uh, work into tenure and promotion guidelines at the junior college level and at the senior college level is a way to without spending four million dollars maybe incentivize faculty or provide support so if you have any questions for us uh, you can find us way too often on twitter or in the chat here and i think we both have bios up in social bingo so we look forward to chatting with you Amazing. Thank you so much. Please, everybody, put, that, put your hands together for a wonderful presentation from Shauna and Stacey.